Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Bracketology episode. I know it's been a while. I'm really sorry about that. I've I've just been really bad with getting videos out this year. I'm I just I I don't even really have a good excuse other than I've been busy with college stuff. Really sorry about that. But what we're gonna do? I don't actually have an actual bracket for you. I'm sorry if it's disappointing. But we're gonna go about this through a bit of a different way. I'm going to go conference by conference. I have all the conference standings right here. Conference by conference. I'll tell you about how many bids each league is going to get. I'll tell you who to look out for, who might be not as good as you think they are, or who might be better than you think they are. And, of course, it's just my opinion. It's, it's not fat. I might throw some stats out there, but it's not going to be like, oh, this team is terrible. You guys get the deal. I think you guys are going to understand. How this works. Now, we're about to go into conference tournament weekend. So, a lot of these conferences are done with their regular season. And others will have, like, maybe two games, two, three games left. And then they'll go through the process of conference tournament. So, let's first look at the A-Sun. This is a one-bid league. I don't think that there's no way multiple teams from this conference get in. The favorite, I guess, would be Eastern Kentucky. I mean, thirteen and three at home, four and ten on the road. I don't. I wouldn't really. They're probably going to be about a fifteen seed. Stetson and uh, Lipscomb could maybe challenge them, but we'll see. Uh, just kind of a basic one bid league. The America East. Vermont is running away with this league. They're fourteen and one in conference. In fact, I don't even know what was the only conference game that they lost. They lost at NJIT by two points. Other than that, really no one has been able to beat them in this conference. Vermont is always a sneaky good team, I feel like. They usually shoot the three really well. They're 13-1 at home, and 9-4 and on the road is actually pretty good. So watch out for Vermont. They'll probably be about a 13 seed, I would imagine. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. The American Athletic Conference... A lot of people, I'm actually part of a college basketball club at IU, and I, 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 I want to do something with that for this YouTube channel. We'll have to see. South Florida is the only team that's ranked, and they hold a three-game lead over everyone else in the conference. I don't even know if they have any conference games left. They have two left. So they've pretty much, with two games to play and a three-game lead, they've locked up the American Conference regular season championship. They're 22-5, and five, but... A lot of people, they started the year 2-4. and four. Since that, they are 20-1. and one. Now, a lot, and since of those 20 wins, they've won like, look at this, they've won like 15 games in a row against teams like FAU, Memphis, some good teams, but a lot. I've heard people say, that if they don't win the conference tournament, they won't get in. Because their net rating is in the 80s or something like that. The advanced metrics and like efficiency stats, they don't like South Florida. There's no way that if they lose their conference tournament, they don't get in. They've been dominating this, this conference this whole year. Florida Atlantic was supposed to be up here, and Florida Atlantic still had a really good year. They should get in, in my opinion. But I don't, I don't know. It's it's kind of a slippery, slippery slope here. I think because a lot of people are saying this is a one bid league. I think South Florida's getting in regardless, and I think FAU's getting in regardless too because they have some good enough wins. They have a win over A and M that looks good. Um. They beat Arizona, but like, yeah, they have a loss to Florida Gulf Coast. They have a loss to Charlotte. I think that just because Florida Atlantic was so good last year, as long as they don't cave through the earth, like who do they have left? North Texas and Memphis. As long as they do, as long as they don't cave through the earth, they should make the tournament. 22 at 7 is definitely good enough. I think the same thing goes for South Florida. Charlotte's going to have to win the conference tournament, and they're a pretty decent team. I, I wouldn't be completely surprised if they did. And then Memphis, I don't know about Memphis. This was a rough stretch for them. They lost four in a row to some just not good teams. 
They do have that win over FAU, but if you ask me right now, I think Memphis is on the outside looking in. I think they're going to have to at least make the American Conference title to be in consideration. I just, I don't know. They're, they're kind of lagging behind the rest, in my opinion. The Atlantic 10. Now, this conference is always chaos every year, I feel like. Dayton was the favorite to win everything in their conference. And they have they had a really good year, but as of late, they had a two-point loss to VCU. They lost to George Mason and most recently Loyola. I think they're going to get in. Uh, I think they're getting in regardless of what happens. 20, 20, uh, like 22 and 6, I think that's just going to be good enough to get in. Richmond has, I think, put themselves in a very good position, possibly for an at-large bid, because they've just been heating up 14 and 2, 22 and 7 overall. I think right now they're on the outside looking in. But they're going to have some games that potentially get them into that spot. Same thing with Loyola. Both these two teams right now are on the outside looking in. But they're going to have chances to eventually get in the tournament. And obviously, if one of these teams wins the conference tournament, that's not a good look for any teams that are on the bubble. Because they would be stealing a bid possibly from somebody so and then VCU on the VCU I think is going to need to win the conference tournament. There's no way they're going to get at large, but Richmond and Loyola, maybe we'll see. I do think Dayton is going to get at large bid if they don't win the conference tournament. That's kind of where I'm at uh, with this. The ACC, North Carolina is going to make it. Duke's going to make it. Virginia will make it. I I think. The rest of these teams. I mean, Clemson, I think, will make it. Syracuse has kind of had a surge lately. They've won four in a row, and they have a game at Clemson. If Syracuse can win that game at Clemson, they they definitely might be in the conversation. Clemson, a lot of people, I think, are having them as straight up they're getting in. and But this loss to Notre Dame is definitely not helping their case. If, if Clemson takes care of business the rest of the way, they should be fine. For the rest of these teams, like these middle pack teams, it's it's going to be interesting. A lot of people like Wake Forest to get in. I'm just not so sure. They're 2-4 and four in their last six. They're kind of falling out of contention, if you ask me. I currently would not have them in. I think Syracuse is going to have to win that game at Clemson and then continue to play really well. Uh, Virginia, Duke, UNC, they're obviously getting in. They're both sitting at around, I would say, a two seed, probably. Virginia, I would probably seven or eight range. Clemson, eight, nine, ten range, I would say. I think that's pretty fair. The Big 12. These are the big boys. Now, a lot of people are saying that this conference will break the record for most bids. From a league, I'm pretty sure the old Big East has the record with 11. Somebody can fact check me on that. Houston is for sure getting in. And if you ask me, I think they're the best team in the country. I think they're better than UConn. I think they're better than Purdue. Their defense is so good. It's so it's levels ahead of other teams. Like Their defense is significantly better than a lot of other teams. And also, part of the reason that they would make the tournament not go as far in past years is because they weren't battle-tested throughout the regular season and stuff. Because teams in bigger conferences are more battle-tested throughout the year. Look at the teams they've been playing. Even going back to the start of year, Utah, Dayton, Xavier, a and Iowa State, West Virginia, Texas Tech, BYU. They're playing all these other Big 12 teams. Look at this. They won at Baylor. They beat Iowa State. They, they are murdering teams. And they're not even they're not out here playing a cupcake American schedule anymore. They're in the Big 12 doing stuff like this. Iowa State, another team that I'm gonna go out on a limb and say is legit. Houston's gonna be a one seed. Iowa State probably gonna be a two seed, if I were to imagine. They would have some serious work to do to get to a one seed. I think if they win the Big 12 tournament, that option is there. 
But Iowa State is legit on defense also. They're they're basically they have the same blueprint as Houston, but they're a little they're not as good as Houston. They're still really good, but they're just not as good as Houston. I'm telling you, every year, every year, I pick Iowa State to make a run when they have a decent team, and they never pull through. And whenever I don't pick them to make a run, they always go far. I'm telling you, I'm picking Iowa State to make a run. They're legit, man. They are absolutely legitimate. Shout out Iowa State. They're doing really well. Baylor, you know the deal with Baylor. They're, they're really good. They're going to be about a probably a three or a four. If you ask me, maybe a, maybe a two, but I would say three or four probably. Uh, they're they're also legitimate. I think they're as advertised. Texas to okay. So after these three, you got just a pack of everybody else, and it's hard to believe that Kansas is in that pack of everybody else. Nine and seven on the year in conference play. I thought they were the best team to start the year. Like, when I saw them play IU, I was like, oh, holy cow, this team's legit. And they might be a little overrated, man. I mean, they're 14-1 and one at home, 3-6 and six on the road. We'll have to see how they do in a neutral site game. BYU, on the other hand, is kind of in the same boat. They're, they're, both these teams are on the same level. In fact, BYU actually beat Kansas on the road. BYU, like, these teams are going to be really good. I think BYU is going to be about a 5, and I think they'll give Kansas probably a th- 4 or 3. If you ask me, just because Kansas is a bigger name, so they're going to give Kansas a bigger seed, whether it's fair or not, complain to whoever it is you like to complain to. Texas Tech, also in the same kind of boat. They'll probably be about a five or maybe a six. I don't know. Texas and TCU are both, basically, for Texas and TCU, they're both very mid in conference, and they're kind of mid overall, but they've just played so many good teams. To where they've racked up enough good wins, and they should have no problem making the tournament. Probably eight or nine seed range, if you ask me. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma and Kansas State. I don't think Kansas State. I think Oklahoma's the cutoff. I don't think Kansas State will end up making it. I don't think Cincinnati will end up making it. Same thing with UCF, and obviously not these two teams. Yeah, like the overall records is not good enough. Like seventeen and twelve. That I think that. I think for Kansas State or Cincinnati, they'd have to at least get to twenty wins. If they're not, if you can't get to, like, who does Kansas State end the year against? Like, yeah, if they win both these games, then we could talk about them making the tournament. But Kansas and Iowa State, I don't think they're going to win either one of those games. And I think the same that same thing probably goes for Cincinnati, Oklahoma. I uh, I don't listen. I'm telling you right now, I don't think they're that good. Like, look at this. Didn't play anyone good. Got blasted by UNC. This win over Iowa State's looking really good. It was it was at home, but then like on the road they didn't do very well. Uh, like they just uh, they they're just getting beat up by the better teams of the conference. I know they almost won this game against Houston. I'll give them credit for that. But if you ask me, I don't think they're good enough to be in the tournament. That doesn't mean that they won't make it, but I don't think that they're good enough. That's just my opinion. Big East. UConn's getting a one seed. They, they're, they, they're going to get a one seed. Creighton most likely. Creighton and Marquette are both in that two seed to three seed range. These are two legitimate teams. Uh, Creighton, when they're on their game, they're they're really really hard to beat. But when they're off their game, they like this is a Creighton's a team where it's like when they don't bring their A game, they will lose. Like I'll just show you. I'll just show you some examples really quickly. Like, here, like, look, when they're on their A game, they're murdering teams like Nebraska, who's been looking really well, and they're beating Alabama. But, like, yeah, they've slipped up against Villanova, had that really bad loss to Colorado State. Um, they do have a, they had a loss to Butler where they gave up 99, lost to St. John's by 14. But, like, when they're on their game, they're out here beating Marquette by 14 points. It's just a matter – and also, yeah, they, they beat UConn, too. They embarrassed them. Like, when they're on their game, when Creighton is playing their best basketball, they're just as good as – any team in the country, but when they're not, you, you know you don't know what you're gonna get. But after these three, are we really thinking any of these other teams are gonna get into the tournament? Seton Hall, I think, definitely has a compelling case. They have that win over UConn that's looking looking great. But I mean, uh, I don't I don't know. They just lost at Creighton at UConn. They have two games. I think they should win Villanova DePaul. 
De- can we take one second to talk about DePaul? They are horrendous. Oh, oh and 18. I'm very sorry to all the Blue Demon fans out there. Like all these 500 ish Big 12 teams, or Big East teams, like uh, all the teams that are like these, these pack of teams, they all got to make a run. And it's got to be now. And I think if, if Pro, I think Providence and Seton Hall are in the best position to do that. If Seton Hall makes a run or Providence makes a run, they'll get in. I'll, you can count Villanova in that group, too. But these teams got to start winning some games, and if they don't, they're not making it. Big Sky. This is another one-bid league. Only one of these teams getting in. Sorry, Big West. Or Big Sky. But it's looking to be Eastern Washington. They're the favorites currently. Probably going to be about a 15 seed. I, I don't mean to hate on y'all, but I don't really see Eastern Washington doing a lot of damage. Big South, it's going to be UNC Asheville or High Point, probably. High Point, actually, I can't remember. We're going to pull up Ken Palm really quickly. I don't remember which one it was, but I think High Point was ranked like really high in offensive efficiency. I'm actually going to see if they're still there. Yeah, High Point, it actually boasts the 30th ranked offense by efficiency in the country. Um, What's their defense, though? Ooh, 254. All I'm saying is when you're picking upsets, look for a team that specializes in, like, one category. Either they're really, really good on offense or really, really good on defense. High point, team to look out for. That's all I'll say. The Big Ten. Oh, boy. What are we going to do with y'all? Purdue's obviously going to make it. They're going to be a one seed, most likely. They just won the Big Ten regular season. So they should be able to make it. Illinois. Gonna probably be, I would say, about a three or a four. I don't think they're gonna get up near that like two seed range. I think three or four is fair. And then it's kind of just what do you do with the rest? Ra- okay, Northwestern and Nebraska will make it, and I think that they will both be around that eight nine seed range, and I think that's fair. Both these teams, I think, are overperforming expectations, so good for them. But then the rest of these teams, it's like, what are we going to do with y'all? Wisconsin, this downfall needs to be studied. Because right, I think it was here, they got ranked number six in the country. And then what the hell happened? They lost at Nebraska and Purdue when ranked number six. But then they got dropped to like what, like 15, 12-ish? And then they lost at Michigan and at Rutgers, who are not having good years. Beat Ohio State, but then they lost to Iowa. They lost to the Hoosiers. My Hoosiers. Like, are they... Like, look at this. They, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've lost seven of their last nine. If they keep playing this way, they might play themselves out of the tournament. Right now, I think they're in... Just because it's like they're fifth in the Big Ten, and I think they have enough, like, staying power. But I don't know. Another team I want to talk about is Michigan State. If you ask me right now, is Michigan State good enough to make the tournament? I would tell tell you no. I I don't think they're good enough to make the tournament. They will. They will make the tournament. But I don't think they should. This team is not that good. I'm sorry. Lost to Minnesota. They just lost to Ohio State. Got lost to Purdue. Like, they're going to make it. This win over Indiana State looks good. I don't think this team is that good, but I'm telling you what's going to happen. They're going to make the Sweet 16. Time is going to find a way, basically. They're not, I don't think they're deserving, but they'll find a way. Iowa, Minnesota, and the Hoosiers, and I'll throw Ohio State in here too. These teams all got to make a run, and it's got to be now. They all have to win multiple games in the Big Ten tournament and win out the rest of the year. Indiana, I know off the top of my head, I go I go to IU, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. I'm very disappointed with the league I've been playing. Indiana plays at Minnesota and then home against Michigan State. That Michigan State game is going to be huge. Just because if they want to make the tournament, they got to win that game because Michigan State's right in the same boat as them, pretty much. Ohio State pretty much had played themselves out of the tournament, but they fired their coach and started to win some games. 
basically for Ohio State, Indiana, Iowa, and Minnesota, they all have to win their last two games and then win multiple games in the Big Ten tournament to have a chance, pretty much. So those teams have to do some winning now because right now they're out. Big West, watch out for UC Irvine. I, I'm pretty sure I – hold on. Let me reference the Ken Palm page. That UC Irvine ranks 28 in defense. In March, you need teams to know how to defend. UC Irvine knows how to defend. Uh, we'll see if the – I don't think UC San Diego is eligible. I think they're too new to Division One, so I won't get back to on that. But UC Irvine, I think, is going to win this contest pretty easily. Watch out for them. They could be an upset. Could be an upset team. The Coloca, the Coastal Athlete. I thought this was the Colonial. Did they did they do some renaming? I swear this is the Colonial Athletic Association. Coastal. All right. Sorry. Um, Charleston had a really good team last year, but kind of forgot how to play basketball at the start of the year. But they've been cooking ever since that. They've been racking up the wins. They're not as good as their team that made the tournament last year, though. A lot of people had them as an upset pick last year. They're not as good this year. Drexel does have a win over Villanova. They're not terrible. If they win the conference tournament, maybe watch out for them. And you see Wil- UNC Wilmington has a win over Kentucky. So maybe watch out for those teams. But other than that, this is a one-bid league, and the winner will probably get a 14 to 13 seed if I had to, had to guess. Conference USA, this conference sucks. I'm sorry. Been a lot of rearranging and with conference realignment it's going to be between sam houston state or or louisiana tech and whoever wins that is going to probably get a 15 or 16 seed this is just not a very good conference well we'll see our d1 independent chicago state uh we love chicago state my mom actually went to grad school there so go cougars they are joining the nec so that's uh that's pretty cool. So shout out Chicago State. Horizon League, another one bid league. Oakland has been having a pretty good year. So is Youngstown State. Uh, I don't really see either one of these teams pulling off an upset. Uh, the winner should probably expect a 15 seed. The Ivy League, this is actually a, comp- a really competitive league. These three teams, Princeton, Yale, Cornell, all fighting for that spot. Now, here's an interesting with, thing with Princeton. They're 23-3. and three. That's an incredibly impressive record. They did lose at Cornell and at Yale back-to-back, but other than that, they've been racking up the wins. My question is if they lose the conference in the conference tournament, do they get consideration for an at-large? I, you can argue that they should. I don't know if they will, though. Like, 23-3 and three is impressive, but I don't know if they're going to get that much consideration. We'll see. I think they're going to have to win the conference. As much as it would be kind of cool to see a two-bit Ivy League, it's probably not going to happen. Cornell and Yale, they're they're following behind. All three of these teams are good. They're all, you, you know what they say about these Ivy League teams. They're, they're a disciplined team, and they play the right way. And like it or not, that can be a formula for an upset in March. Princeton and Yale have pulled off upsets before. I think Cornell actually made the Sweet 16 back in the day. I think all three of these teams, if they get a favorable matchup, watch out. That's all I'm going to say. The MAAC, shout out St. Peter's. They're not as good as they uh, used to be. Quinnipiac's having a pretty decent year, 21-8. and eight. The winner of this league could probably expect a 15-16 seed. I don't really see anyone doing a lot of damage out of this league. The Mac Akron is kind of running, or Toledo's a game back. We'll have to see about this league. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, Akron's pretty good. I know Kent State won the league last year, but they lost a lot of people. Akron, they, they're actually, they're decent. Probably a 14 seed if they win it. Same thing goes for Toledo. Both these teams are pretty decent. Might be able to pull off an upset. The MEAC, Middle Eastern Athletic Conference, uh, the, none of these teams are good. I, I hate, like, every year this league is really bad. And the winner of this league is going to get a 16 seed play in. And maybe they'll win, but they might. They're not going to be, they're not upsetting a one seed. I'm, I'm sorry. 
Now, the Missouri Valley, things can get interesting here. Your Indiana State Sycamores currently lead the league at 17-3. Drake is a game back. How many games do they have left? Okay, so I think their regular season's actually done. Yeah, so their regular season is done. So it's going to come down to the conference tournament. Now, both these teams, Indiana State and Drake, both have really impressive records, 26-5 to 25-6. and six. It's, I, in my opinion, I think they're both good enough to make the tournament. However, the question's going to be, because only one of them can win the league and get that automatic bid. The question is going to be, if they win, will they get an at-large? And I think that the loser of these two will be considered for an at-large. I don't know if they'll actually get one. Indiana State actually was ranked. After this Missouri State game, they were ranked like 23. And then they lost back-to-back games to Southern Illinois and Indiana, uh, to Illinois State and Southern Illinois. They just kind of cracked under the pressure of being ranked. But this is a team that shoots the ball from three very effectively. They spread the court out a lot. I think they could definitely win a game in the tournament if they get in. Drake, on the other hand, also a very good team. I think, in my opinion, I think both these teams should make it. I think they're they're both good enough to make it. I don't know if they will. It's a competitive field on that bubble, so we'll uh we'll have to the jury the jury awaits on these two. But one of them's gonna make it, and I think both of them should make it. Mountain West. This league is kind of just a, a cluster cluster uck. Like, I, I, I don't really know what to think of this. Utah State is for... Utah State and San Diego State will both definitely get in. Nevada and Boise State should also both get in, probably. All over 20 wins. These top four, I don't think, should have a problem getting in. Utah State and San Diego State are probably looking at six seeds. Boise State Nevada probably looking at nine to ten seeds. And then after these four, it gets really dicey. UNLV, 18 and 10, is not going to be good enough to make the tournament unless they win the conference tournament, which with how crazy college basketball can get, I wouldn't put it past them to win the league. But right now they're out, and they're going to probably have to win the league. New Mexico and Colorado State. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I think a lot of people have Colorado State as a slam dunk to get in just because they started the year on a tear. I'm kind of embarrassed to say this. Earlier in the year, I had them at a two seed. They were playing that well. Like, look at this mauling of Creighton. Uh, But then they lost again to St. Mary's, but we're still playing really well. But the back half of this run, I mean, lost to New Mexico, lost to UNLV. Lost to Nevada. Like, the losses are kind of starting to pile up. They're, they, they're barely over 500 in conference. I, I just don't know. I really don't know about them. And the same thing goes for New Mexico. Like, ugh. They also started the year really well. A lot of wins. And then, like, this loss to Air Force is terrible. That's a quad four loss. I, both these teams are going to have to at least win one game in there. I don't know if, I don't know. It really depends on how you look at this. But I, in my opinion, they got to at least do something in the conference tournament. The, the bubble is just really competitive and they're not playing good enough right now. New Mexico and Colorado State, I would say they got work to do. The Northeast Conference, for our college basketball club, we actually got to interview the commissioner of this conference. Shout out Noreen Morris. My, I don't know if we have that. I don't know if we recorded it or not. I'll try to find the footage of that. Basically, though, all these teams are not very good. And they'll, one of them will get in and they'll get a 16 seed play in. It's going to be either Connecticut State or Central Connecticut or Merrimack. I think it's going to be Merrimack because they won the league last year and didn't get to go because they weren't eligible, but they're eligible this year. So shout out Merrimack. I'm going to say that they get it done. Ohio Valley, it's going to be one of these three. Little, Little Rock, Moorhead, or UT Martin. Probably a 14 seed to whoever wins that. 
The Pac-12. Arizona will get in, and they'll probably be a two seed. And I'm telling you right now, they're fraudulent. They're not that good. They, I'm sorry, they have some very puzzling losses. And to be honest, not that many great wins. Like, every time they've come up against a legitimate team, they haven't played well. Michigan State, I, okay, this win at Duke was really good, but that was the second game of the year. Purdue, they, they couldn't pull through. FAU, they couldn't pull through. Washington State, they couldn't pull through. Twice, twice they lost to Washington State. Um, they have two more games. Washington State actually has a chance to win the conference outright. Not outright, but like get a share of the regular season title, which would be a big deal for Washington State. They've been, they've been really turning it up. They kind of had a, they had a really rough stretch here, but since then they've been all business. Uh, they have one game left against Washington, so they would need to win that, and then I think have, Ariz- and then have Arizona lose at least one of their next two. I don't know. They're really good. Probably about a five seed. I mean, their record's really good. Definitely watch out for uh, for Washington State. I don't really know what their efficiency is. What is their efficiency margin? Do the, do the advanced metrics like them or not? 39. So, uh, so not that great in the advanced numbers category, but I mean, they're numbers for a reason. Colorado. All right. Here's my take. Between Utah, Oregon, Colorado, one of these three will get in. And it's just going to be whoever goes the farthest in the Pac-12 tournament. One of them could win it, maybe. But that's ultimately what I think it's going to be. Whichever one of these three goes the farthest will get in. Sorry to the rest. I think all these three teams are okay and maybe good enough to make the tournament, but we'll have to see. Patriot League, it's going to be Colgate. I mean, they run away with this league every year. Right in recent memory, it seems like. So, hold on. My computer's going to buy the dime. Just grab the charger. So, I think that's what you could expect from this league. Colgate will get in. They'll get a 14 seed. And maybe, maybe, they'll get, maybe they'll get some damage. Probably not, though. The SEC. It just means more. What do we have here? Tennessee's getting in. Bobby, te- these these top these top five are all getting in. Tennessee will probably be a two, maybe a one. If they keep winning, they can play themselves to a one seed. That's not an overstatement. Alabama will get in probably a four. South Carolina, I'm thinking about a five. Uh, maybe maybe a four just because that twenty four and five is just crazy. Uh, deceiving 24 and 5, but they're still good. Kentucky, though, I'm thinking like four, I'm thinking like anywhere from three to five for all these teams, just because they're all ranked really highly and they're all legitimate teams. Now, if you want to really get into it, I think Tennessee's legit. I think Alabama could be in trouble for an upset just because their defense is not good. They are like consistently giving up very high volume of points. I think if they run into like a team like High Point that has like a really good offense, could be trouble. I'm not saying that High Point's like a guaranteed fucking gonna beat them. I'm just saying be weary of Alabama. Defense is not that great. South Carolina, Kentucky. I think all three of these teams have Sweet Sixteen potential, but I don't think they'll go past that. I think of these three, Auburn's definitely the best. I think I have my question. I have my questions about Kentucky just because like they sometimes don't show up against. Not as good teams. Like, um, holy cow, my computer sounds like an airport hangar. Uh, like UNC Wilmington, bad loss. I mean, they also lost to someone like Gonzaga at home. That loss is not very good. Lost to LSU. Like, I don't know. Gave up 102 points to Arkansas. I don't know. We'll have to see. I would like to see some better defense and stuff out of Kentucky, but they're still pretty good. We're almost done with this. What else do we got? The Southern. It's going to be Sanford. And Sanford's 26-5. and five. They have a legitimate team. This is a very strong team. Watch out for them, possibly for an upset. They, The metrics like them a lot. Watch out for, uh, for Sanford. Same thing with McNeese out of the Southland. 26-3? and three? They're pretty good, man. They are, uh, they are pretty good. Uh, what, they're definitely going to be a 12, and I think they're going to be a very popular 12-5 uh, upset. If they get the right matchup, I would hammer them. 
in my bracket on that 12-5. They are, uh, I think, even, who did they even lose to? Okay, so they got some or two losses earlier in the year, but, like, you got a win over Michigan uh, on the road by a pretty decent amount, too. They've been, uh, they've been really good. Watch out for McNeese. They are definitely, uh, they're good. Uh, how many more do we have? Uh, the SWAC. Shout out Mississippi Valley State got their first win the other week. Twenty uh, one and twenty eight they are now. It it's going to be Grambling or Texas Southern, and they're going to have to play in Dayton in the uh, in the first four play in games. That's just this league is never good. I'm sorry. Uh, so that's probably what's going to happen. Same thing. Summit League. South Dakota State's good, but they're not as good as their teams that uh, that did uh, like really really well. Oh, Roberts is really not liking the loss of Max A. Smith. They're last in the conference. I don't think any of these teams are are looking are gonna get an upset at all. Probably gonna be South Dakota State that wins the league. The fun belt. Now we have an interesting situation developing in the fun belt. App State sits at twenty six and five. James Madison sits at twenty eight and three. Now, one of these two is going to win the conference. They're going to win the conference tournament and probably get a 12 seed about just because their records are, uh, are really, really good. Here, here's, here's the thing, though. I think both of these teams should get in the tournament just because those records are really impressive. App State has a win over Auburn. Like, I don't, I don't know what you want. Here's what I think will happen. I think if App State wins the league... James Madison will get in. I think they'll get in. Just because their only losses, they lost to App State twice, which is not great. Well, their only other loss is like to Southern Miss. They've won literally every other game. They beat Michigan State way back, first game of the year. Their record is just so impressive to where I think they'll get in. Now, if App State wins, if App State wins, though, here's what you got to say. Yeah, but they they beat James Madison twice. I think there's a very... I think if App State loses, they won't get in. But I think if App State wins the conference, James Madison will get in. Because both these teams are really good. Like it or not, they're, they're both really good teams. So definitely something to keep an eye on. We'll, we'll see what happens with this conference. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. West Coast. St. Mary's and Gonzaga will both get in. They'll both probably be about a probably five or six. St. Mary's, I think it's pretty interesting. They were garbage to start the year. Look at this. They started three and five. Since that, they're 21 and two. Look at all these wins. Lost to Missouri State. Not a great loss. But like look at this. They won 15 games, 16 games in a row until they lost to Gonzaga just the other day. Gonzaga needed that win, too. They definitely got back into contention with that win. We'll have to see what happens here. Both these teams are really good. They'll both get in. San Francisco and Santa Clara, I'll say this. They're two pretty decent teams. I think they can maybe make a run at the conference title and steal a bit. That's just something to keep an eye on. We'll see. And then Grand Canyon is 26-4. and four. Out of the whack. Lost to South Carolina, but close. They they did lose two games back to back, but they're still a really good team. They do a lot of winning. Winnings, I have it with them. Maybe watch out for them for an upset. Okay, so I hope that was a good enough bracketology video for you. I'll definitely get. I want to do at least one more proper one, like with an actual thing. I wanted to get at least one more proper bracketology out for you. Let's say next week. Next week's my spring break. So I'll have time to actually sit down and get you guys a bracket. Sound like a plan? Good. All right. Take care and watch out for that video coming out.